Hi, my name is Dr. Robert Groisman with COVIDinstitute.org, and I've been asked several times, um, what does Epstein Barr virus reactivation mean? What it's about? Um, everybody knows that it is a herpes um, family of virus. So what is the herpes family of viruses in humans? Well, there's, there's eight of them. Um, there's the simplex one and two. There's the varicella zoster, which is chickenpox. There's the cytomegalovirus, CMV, Epstein-Barr virus, uh, which causes mononucleosis. And uh, it hides out in memory B cells. Uh, there's also human herpes virus six, um, which lives in T cells, the CD4 plus um, T cells, and the herpes virus 7, which also lives in T cells, and the Kaposi sarcoma herpes virus. This one is mainly um, due to HIV or AIDS. What's special about herpes family um, of viruses is that they persist. In other words, um, after the acute or initial infection, uh, it can become latent because it establishes itself within um, lymphocytes or white blood cells or um, endothelial tissue, and it goes into hibernation until the next time uh, the immune system decreases to a point where it reactivates. And that's true pretty much for every single herpes family virus. What is Epstein-Barr virus? Um, that's, that's EBV. It's also known as kissing disease or mono or mononucleosis. It is part of the herpes family of viruses, as, uh, as I said. And uh, this one in particular is number four. And uh, as I mentioned just before, that the herpes family of viruses will remain in your body forever once infected. Uh, you can't get rid of it. You can't uh, get it out of your system. But we can't prevent uh, reactivations. We just can't clear it from our bodies. All the herpes viruses are DNA viruses. They remain latent. Uh, Epstein-Barr virus specifically in memory B cells. Um, when it becomes latent, it's basically inactive. It's The genetic code is in your cells, but it's not reproducing and producing additional viruses. For most people, reactivation will not cause any new symptoms. It is rarely associated with several cancers, including Burkitt lymphoma, which is a cancer of the white blood cells, Hodgkin's lymphoma, gastric carcinoma, which is a, ca a cancer of the gastric... Um, gastric system, and cancer of the nose and throat. And this is due to genetic changes that are made by the virus to our cells that influence the cell growth cycle. Epstein-Barr virus is in about 95% of the human population um, on Earth. So it's incredibly um, common to see this, and most people already have it. Uh, it it can pass through just about any which way you can think of, blood, saliva, and sexual interactions. What does infectious mono look like? The typical symptoms are fatigue, fever, inflamed throat, um, swelling of the lymph nodes, especially of the neck. Your spleen can get enlarged, your liver can get enlarged, and a rash. There are some rare but possible complications from Epstein-Barr virus. Now, this, this can happen during the initial infection or it can happen after reactivation. So this, this is not a complete list, but uh, it's some of the main ones that, that can be seen. Um, meningitis, which would be a viral meningitis, uh, swelling of the spinal cord tissue. Encephalitis, which is swelling of the brain, pretty serious. Optic neuritis, where the eye nerve is inflamed. Transverse myelitis, this is another swelling of the spinal cord, but different from meningitis. Facial nerve palsies, that means that some of the cranial nerves, um, including the facial nerve, can, um, can be involved and you can have paralysis of facial muscles. Guillain-Barre syndrome, 
Uh, this is an immune system disease that causes ascending paralysis. Um, it's been talked about quite a bit uh, since vaccinations and and with with COVID. Um, acute cere cere cerebellar ataxia. Uh, this uh, your cerebellum is responsible for uh, coordination and muscle movement. Uh, hemiplasia, paralysis of one side of the body, sleep disorders, psychosis, pneumonia, and including lung, lung scarring, pancreatitis, which is inflammation of the pancreas, and myocarditis, inflammation of the heart. How do we treat infectious mononucleosis? Well, most of the time it's supportive. Uh, we do rest, hydration, making sure you're taking in plenty of liquids and treating symptom, symptom, symptoms um, with over-the-counter medications, such as uh, medications for pain, fever, or sore throat. Most of the time, it resolves on its own between two and four weeks. Sometimes the fatigue can continue uh, for several weeks additional after recovery. Now, this, this only applies if you don't have the complications we just talked about. Um, what makes Epstein-Barr virus reactivate? Well, any types of stress, physical or emotional stress. If you have a weakened immune system, menopause, associated, um, the hormonal changes that are associated with menopause can trigger Epstein-Barr virus uh, and activate it. Taking immunosuppressants if you are treating an autoimmune condition uh, or if you're if you have an organ transplant or you're taking chemotherapy, um, all this immunosuppressant medication can reactivate Epstein-Barr virus. So what happens when Epstein-Barr virus reactivates? Well, a lot of times nothing. Um, but sometimes it can look just like the acute phase of the infection, like the original one uh, with the sore throat and the rash and the swollen lymph nodes in your neck um, and the liver and, and um, basically all the same symptoms that you would see in the initial infection can show up here, including the complications. Now, there was a recent study showing that the reactivation of Epstein-Barr can serve as a biomarker for long COVID. Since patients in long COVID tend to have reactivation of EBV, EBV more frequently than the general population. So as I said, symptoms can be similar or identical to the original infection. Reactivation or even the initial infection can put you at risk for chronic fatigue syndrome. It could put you at risk for autoimmune disease. And as stated, the COVID positive group had almost double actually more than double um, rate of reactivation of EBV compared to a negative group. How do you treat reactivation? Well, for the most part, again, it would be supportive. However, if there's a need to treat reactivation because you're having complications or severe symptoms, there are several medications that can target specifically herpes family of viruses of DNA. And that would be a cyclovir, gangcyclovir, valacyclovir, um, then gangcyclovir, um, cidofovir, and pyrophosphate. So um, this one here, um, the, valam the valamacyclovir, is not currently available yet, uh, but basically they target the DNA mechanism uh, of replication for the herpes family of viruses. And since cytomegalovirus CMV is also part of the herpes family, um, it can attack that as well. There's another medication that's often prescribed for platelet inhibition, and it's actually even used to vasodilate coronary arteries uh, during uh, stress tests, chemical stress tests, but um, this works by a different mechanism than these antivirals, and uh, it can actually prevent Epstein-Barr reactivation. 
Um, however, because it inhibits nucleoside uptake, which is how these antivirals work, uh, you can't combine the two together. What is an Epstein-Barr virus panel? So there's several aspects to it. There's four different uh, parts to the antibody test. There's the um, anti-VCA-IgM, which is the viral capsid antigen, and there's also the anti-VCA-IgG. There's the early antigen, also known as EA, and Epstein-Barr virus nuclear antigen, or EBNA. So depending on how, how these come up together, all four of these, we can figure out um, if it's a new infection, if it's an uh, old infection and it's just latent, if it's a reactivation, um, or if you're having an active infection again. So let's take a look at the, I guess the interpretation part. So if everything is negative, you're still susceptible and you, you're probably lucky and you're 5% of the population. Um, in the beginning, what we call the early acute infection, this is the first time you've never had Epstein-Barr before. This is the first time you're having mono. Um, you'll, you'll see the VCA IgM positive and the VCA IgG positive, but the other two will be negative. Doing an active infection, the IgM may go away um, after two to four weeks, but the IgG will persist. And actually, IgG will persist for life for most people. Now, EA is important because it signals an active infection. This forms later on, not early in the infection, but later, uh, while you're still infected, but before you recovered. What if you had a past infection? Well, in this case, you would have a positive IgG for the VCA and EBNA. Now, this is a late one. Um, once you've recovered, this is the one that becomes positive. So how do you know if it's a first-time infection versus a reactivation? Well, this is it. This, this EBNA is going to be positive with a reactivation, but won't be positive with a first-time infection. With reactivation, you may see IgM again from the VCA, and everything else will be positive. That's how we can tell it's an infection. Since we are talking about herpes family um, of viruses, I wanted to just quickly mention um, cytomegalovirus or CMV and how that works. Now, there's a, there's a few different ways to check if a uh, cytomegalovirus is reactivated or if, you're, if you have it or not. One way is with the antibodies. Uh, another way is with an antigen test. So we're really only looking at two antibodies, the IgM and IgG. If they're both negative, you're susceptible. That means you don't have it. If both are positive, it's gonna be an uh, early or acute infection if it's an active infection, IgM will likely be negative at this point. It may, it may be still positive, but what's the most important thing is the difference in the antibody number between the first and second test that is done two weeks apart. If you're seeing an increase, that tells you it's an active infection. If it was a past infection, only the IgG will be pos positive. During a reactivation, um, it will be similar to an active infection where the IgM may be positive or negative, and we will see a rise between the first and second test over a two-week period. If you want to hear more about cytomegalovirus, CMV, or other herpes family virus um, pathogens, uh, give me a like. Um, if I have... Um, thousand likes. I'll, um, I'll do a video on cytomegalovirus and um, some of the other um, herpes family viruses and other videos. Um, you can find me online at covidinstitute.org. And don't forget to subscribe. 
that's by hitting uh, the subscribe button. And I also run a Facebook group, which is going to be listed in the comments or in the description. Thank you. Bye-bye.